invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Vasco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, wonderful thing about America is the inventions they got that to save a time for the housewife in the kitchen. She's a use electric food slicer. Saves the time in the kitchen. She's a use electric range dishwasher mix master. Saves the time in the kitchen. American housewife, she's a saver so much time, she's a never eat in the kitchen. She's a go out to eat in a restaurant. <laughs> it's really wonderful what American people, they do with electricity. They got electric eraser, electric clock, electric blanket. Maybe you don't believe it is, but even a milk cows are by electric. <laughs> I think it's called a milk shake. <laughs> Must be very interesting to watch. So someday I'm going to go out to a farm. I'm got to see how they plug the cow into the wall. <laughs> This morning, I'm going to receive a letter from Electric Company, which will say I owe them a $27. I'm going to never have a, such a big bill. But I'm afraid I'm going to have it to pay anyhow. Over here, Electric Company is a very big, and they got to what is called bulb snatchers. <laughs> if you don't pay your bill, they send over a man, and he's a snatch out of your bulb. <laughs> And Mamma Mia, I don't want this to happen to me. So I think I go now to my night to school and ask my teacher, Miss Spalding, for advice. Attention, class, class. Let's be quiet. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Uh, present. Mr. Harwood? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? Four school and seven years ago, our forefathers, our forefathers. Mr. Schultz, are you present? Who do you think was just talking, Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> 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 oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, fellow boobers. <laughs> you know, I really should be on the radio. <laughs> Please. Oh, just think of it. Amos and Schultz. <laughs> Very funny. Now, class, our lesson for today is... Oh, Mr. Basco, you have your hand raised. What for? For electric bill. <laughs> electric bill? You ask a zilly question, you get a zilly answer. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see, Miss Spaulding? I'm going to get a big bill for my electric... Well, I'll be glad to help you, Mr. Basco, but after class. Right. Now, let's turn to our grammar lesson, which I hope you've all studied. Now, who will give us a sentence demonstrating a subject, verb, and object? Anybody? Will anybody volunteer? <laughs> Mr. Schultz? With a wife and three kids, I should volunteer. I wait till I'm drafted. <laughs> I'll try, Miss Walden. Oh, very good, Mr. Horowitz. Subject, Mary, verb, love. And the object? Well... Well, come now. Mary loves who? Well, tell her the ice man, the whole neighborhood. Man. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, that is no way to learn anything. Well, Mary ain't talking. How else are you going to find out? <laughs> Pausing, I would like to try. Oh, there he goes again. Smart cop. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Olsen. No. <clears throat> In the sentence, I call the policeman. A subject, call this verb, policeman, it's object. A 
Excellent. Thank you, Miss Balding. I always try to be a good student. I study hard all night. I try to learn just as much as possible. Oh, what a show off. <laughs> How can a man with one hat know so much? <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. Now, who can conjugate the verb in Mr. Olson's sentence? Mr. Horowitz? I don't know. Mr. Basco? I'm a no-no. Mr. Schultz? I pass. You better deal out a new question. <laughs> well, Mr. Olson, I suppose you'll have to show the class. Sure. I call the policeman, you call the policeman, he calls the policeman, she calls the policeman, they call the policeman. Himmel, the place must be raided. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please, please be quiet. Mr. Olson, that was excellent. Now, in the sentence, I call a policeman, what word is the adjective? Mr. Basco? $27. What? Where did the $27 come from? Bill of some electric company. <laughs> I see we're back to that again. Very well, what's your problem? Electric company is a sentiment bill for $27. But I'm going to never have a, such a big bill. Is it too much for one a month? Miss Spaulding, what they do to me if I don't pay them? They call the policeman, we call the policeman. <laughs> oh, stop that, Mr. Schultz, please. Now, Mr. Basco, you needn't be frightened. If you feel that the electric company's overcharging you, just go down there and I'm sure they'll make an adjustment. Yeah, yeah, a simple adjustment. <laughs> click, click, you're sitting with candles. <laughs> Schultz, you think they're going to turn off my lights? No, what if they do turn off your lights? Smile, Luigi. <laughs> you know, Washington didn't use electricity and he became president. Jefferson didn't lose electricity, and he became president. Lincoln didn't use electricity, and he became president. Luigi, if they turn off your lights, you know what's liable to happen to you? What? You're liable to fall down the steps and break your neck. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hello, Pasquale. Hey, what's the matter? You look so sad. Like a little abode. It's a dragon is a peep behind. <laughs> well, Pasquale, this morning I'm going to get a big electric bill. I'm going to know what to do. Miss Bowling is a say go to the company. Schultz is a say no. And I'm all mixed up. Sure, here. sure. Go to everybody but your friend Pasquale. He was a big you from all the country. What's happening? Nothing. Why are you all the time like a crazy fella who's a try to get in the house through the back door, the side door, and the window? When I'm here and you could have come straight to the stoop. <laughs> Pasquale, you're so right. Nobody's a bigger stupid than you. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm saying it's a come out of different. <laughs> Tell me, little man, you're so worried about your electric bill. How big is it? Just a little piece of paper, about four by five. <laughs> no, I mean how much money, they ask. Twenty-seven dollars. No doubts about it, Luigi. I just suspense it. I tell you, Luigi, I like you. I got a plan for you where well, you never going to pay electric company one penny. Uh -oh. How you do that? It's a simple... I'm a run a wire from a my spaghetti palace into your store. It's a cost you nothing. You do this for me, Pasquale? Monsieur. <laughs> and every time you want a light, you come into my place and turn on a switch. You don't mind to do that, do you? Oh, of course not, Pasquale. And where is it, this switch you're going to be? In my daughter Rose's room. <laughs> but, Pasquale, is it not the night? If I'm the one to put on the light at the night, the roses are sleeping, how am I going to go into her room? You knock on the door, you say, Rosa, open up. <laughs> is he your husband, Luigi? <laughs> no, no, Pasquale, it's no use. I'm not going to marry your daughter. She's a too fat. Fat, the fat, the fat. <laughs> Always with that four-letter word, F-A-T-A. <laughs> Rosa's enough fat. 
She's only weighs 250 pounds. Well, I'm going to like to marry a girl who's to weigh half of that. 125 pounds? Luigi, that's a ghost. That's a skinless and a boneless. What do you want to marry, a girl or a sardine? Pasquale, I'm not going to marry Russ. If you don't want to help me, I'm going to take a chance. I go to the company myself and ask them why this bill is so much. Bill? Uh, Luigi, how you like uh, I explain to you why they charge you so much money? Please, Pasquale. Well, uh, for instance, uh, you got a bridge lamp for your store. Yes, sir. Dumb bell, what for? You know, play bridge. <laughs> now, here's something else. You know, every time you press a switch, you put on a light, that's a cost to your penny. I'm a heard about that, Pasquale. Yeah, let me see how you put on a light. All right, all right. Oh, oh, just like I'm a thought. You press a heavy with the thumb, that's a cost to you two cents. <laughs> Roses, a cost to four cents. Oh, forget that. <laughs> Now, when you press the switch on and off all day, 30, 40 times, what's happening? You wasted 50, 60 cents. What about you, Pasquale? Me? It's a never cost a penny. How come? I'm never press the switch. I leave the lights on all the time. <laughs> Mamma mia, is there so much to learn? Monsieur. I'm in a lot of tricks. Electric companies are never charging me when I'm using electric razor. You know why? Why? Because I'm always a shaver with a straight razor, and while I'm a shave, I'm a go. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, you smart. Maybe I buy straight razor and go. <laughs> Not so loud. Electric companies are hear you. They charge you just the same. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, is there so much to learn? Monsieur. Luigi. More than a wife, you need a love and a father-in-law. Pasquale, I would like to have you for father-in-law. Fine, and I throw in a rosa. I'm an cat. <laughs> All right, you big stupid green horn of boob. Go to the electric company. You see what's happened to you? You see here on your bill where it's to say kilowatts? Yes, sir. They got you on a murder charge. You've been killing them. <laughs> But this said I gotta give you the electric chair. No. What's the matter? If you not gonna pay electric bill, they know can turn on the juice. You're gonna sit there the rest of your life to laugh at the stock of the convict. <laughs> <laughs> And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And it's so, Mamma Mia, I'm still not to go to an electric company because I'm afraid it's going to be trouble. I'm going to try to figure out to myself why electric bill is so much. So I'm going to take a ball by the ceiling to find out where electricity is coming from. I'm going to stick my finger in a little hole and feel it out. <laughs> Mamma mia, I'm going to feel like Uncle Pietro's a goat is kicking me in the head. <laughs> I'm going to run and tell this to Pasquale, and he's going to tell me that's a happen to everybody who's going to pay his bill. Electric company is a send to him a shock. <laughs> anyway... Pasquale is scaring me so much about electric company. I'm not to know what to do. So I'm sitting here wondering where I'm going to get a $27 and when the door is open up. Luigi, my fellow pooper. <laughs> well, did you straighten out everything with the electric company? No, sure, sir. I'm too afraid to go there. And I'm not got enough for money to pay this bill. Oh, don't be so sad, Luigi. Be like me, always smiling. <laughs> Remember, like we say in the delicatessen business, every road has got a turning, and every salami has got a burning. <laughs> Ooh. What's the matter, Schultz? I had a little salami today. <laughs> no, no, cheer up, Luigi. Smile. <laughs> it's impossible to smile, Schultz. You know, if I'm not going to pay this bill, can an electric company do something bad to me? Oh, stop worrying, Luigi. Even if they throw you out in the street, 
My family would be glad to have you. You come and sleep with us. Yeah. We, we all sleep in one big comfortable bed. Yeah. <laughs> Me, my wife, my three children, my brother Ludwig, his uncle Hans, my cousin Hugo, my cousin Wolfgang, and Wolfgang's accountant, Karl. <laughs> Mr. Carnot and Carl, he's always a sleeper with your family? Sure. He keeps the books to see whose turn it is to use the mattress. <laughs> no, come on, Luigi. You're going to love sleeping with us. No, no, thanks, Mr. Schultz. I think it's going to be too much a trouble. What trouble? It's a pushover. In the middle of the night, we all get up and yell, pushover. <laughs> Luigi. I'm trying to shear you off. <laughs> I'm afraid it's in no use, Mr. Schultz. Now, Luigi, if you're going to act like that, you might as well go to the company and get it over with. But, Schultz, I'm going to never go there. What am I going to say? But you always talk how you want to be like an American. Well, act like an American. Go right down there and talk. Schultz, you give me courage. Thanks. I'm going to go right to now. Good. And, Luigi, be happy. And remember, it's always darkest before the dawn. Especially if you don't pay the electric bill. <laughs> Goodbye and smile, Luigi. <laughs> smile. Oh, oh, my rheumatism is killing <laughs> America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean, I bring my divorce. Huh. Commonwealth Edison building. Mamma me is a big building. Someday maybe I invented something and they make a big building just for me. What am I can invent? I know. Something that's gonna save lives. Banana without a peel. <laughs> sure. You eat a banana is nothing to throw away. Nobody's a slip and a break of their neck. I can see just now. The Basco Banana Building. <laughs> 26 floors are high. No, 27. Oh, my God, I have a one floor to keep the pills. <laughs> oh, Luigi, you're going to be a big man. You're going to have a three secretaries. One is just to say, good morning, Mr. Basco. One is to say, time for your lunch, Mr. Basco. And one is to say, better put on your rubbers. It's raining outside, Mr. Basco. Hmm. Who's going to say good night to Mr. Basco? <laughs> Not enough for help. I'm going to hire another secretary. <laughs> Aloigi, stop a dreaming. You better go inside and find out about your bill. Hmm, there's a lot of people in here. I'm a wonder where I should go. Pardon me, sir. You seem kind of lost here. Can I help you? Yes, I'm going to get a bill for $27 oh. and I'm a... Uh, just take it over to any one of the men behind those bars. Behind at the bars. Yes. You see those little cages? You know who those men are? Must have be customers who don't pay their bills. No, they're cashiers. Come, I'll take you over there. No, no, lady, don't push her. I'm going to go there. All right. You do want to pay your bill, don't you? Yes, but this bill was too much. Well, in that case, I'll take you to the complaint department. Please, lady, don't make a complaint on me. Oh, don't worry. J just come with me. Our manager will talk to you. All right. What is it, Miss Burton? Mr. Clyde, Mr. Basco, one of our customers, claims his last bill has a discrepancy. Please, I'm going to want to make a trouble. Is it no discrepancy? Is it just a mistake? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Miss Burton. You're welcome. I'll get the records on Mr. Basco. Uh, now then, Mr. Basco, I think we can settle your difficulty right away. Good. Believe me, we don't want to overcharge our customers. Uh, when the bill shows an irregularity, it may usually be traced to a technical maladjustment arising out of subnormal wiring conditions. Is that clear? Huh? <laughs> Do you follow me? Are you going to someplace? <laughs> uh, let me clear this up for you. Uh, sometimes we find a customer is using a lot of current quite accidentally. Uh, tell me, do you have any shorts? Yes, I want a pair. I'm wearing them now. Uh, that's not what I meant. Mr. Clyde, I brought you Mr. Basco's file. Uh, thank you, Miss Burton. Uh, now, let me see. Here's some of your recent electric bills. Hmm. Seem to all be rather regular. Let's see. October, $2. November, two ten. December, 
Three dollars. Hmm. Well, you see, I was a Santa Claus for the kids in my block, and it was a big Christmas tree. How about the fun of those bambinos? Uh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, now, January was 218, February 193, March, five dollars. Oh, yes, sir. Was a vacuum cleaner salesman in my store. And I'm not going to get rid of him for a whole week. <laughs> But you see, I'm I'm a never have a such a big bill like a twenty seven dollars. Yes, it does seem rather strange, but I assure you our company is not out to get your money. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> then why they want it? <laughs> Sir, we are a million dollar corporation, sharing our dividends with thousands of subscribers. Huh? How you do this? Well, I'll try to explain. Uh, no doubt you've seen some of our institutional advertising. Now, we show our entire capital structure in terms of a big pie. Now, if you will imagine... Pardon me, what's the kind of pie? Apple or a huckleberry? Uh, we're just speaking figuratively. Oh. It's symbolic. Oh, symbolic of pie. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that pie belongs to thousands of stockholders and customers like yourself. Old ladies with pensions. Retired railroad workers. But I'm not like a pie. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that in the form of reduced cost of operations to you, you are actually obtaining a slice of that pie. I'm a rather have a piece of cake. <laughs> Mr. Basco, try to understand. We don't want your $27 if it doesn't belong to us. In fact, last year our company made a huge profit and returned it to its stockholders. Why, do you know what happened when that pie was open? The birds began to sing. <laughs> Never mind, that's the last straw. Eat the pie with a straw? <laughs> Please, leave. That $27 bill is yours and you'll have to pay it. We'll have a man over there in one hour. But the... Good day, sir. The birds began to sing. <laughs> Luigi, where you been all day? Hey, you look like a monkey that just got a hit by a wrench. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, what a trouble I'm having. Man is to say because I'm a no pay $27, I'm a steal a huckleberry pie from the old lady's pension. <laughs> what? Worse than that. If I'm a no pay my bill, I'm going to get to run over by a retired railroad train. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Were you to the electric company? Pasquale, man is talking so much about his pie, I don't know if I'm in electric company or the bakery. <laughs> What's the matter with you? You going crazy? Next time you take a short haircut, don't let the barber cut out of your brain. <laughs> Please, there's no time for joking. Man is coming any minute to take away my electric. Pasquale, what am I going to do? Uh, Pasquale, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Serves you right. Now to take out of your electric, you got to go live in a gas house in this place. No. Worse than that. The words to get around that Luigi Bosco is an au pay, Drew Pearson is a find out. He's a tell of Congress. Congress is a veto your electric bill and send you back at the Italy. <laughs> Mama dear, what I can I do? Now settle it down and be calm, Luigi. I could have saved you. I got a money. Please, Pasquale. I'd do anything if you were helping me. Even a Mary Rosa? <laughs> Pasquale, that's not anything. That's uh, everything. <laughs> Don't look so sad, Luigi. Is it not every fellow in the Chicago can marry Rosa? You should have known, Pasquale. You tried. <laughs> that's right, and I picked you. Now I'm going to call you finance. <laughs> Rosa... Rosa! Rosa! You call me Papa! <laughs> yes. Come here, little doll. Say hello to your sweetheart. Hello, Rosa. Well, don't just stand there, Rosa. 
pucker up and show Luigi what you can do. Luigi. <laughs> you want to see me touch my nose with my tongue? <laughs> oh, shut up, your face. <laughs> well, Luigi, your troubles is all over. The... Yeah. Hey, what's happened? Who put out the lights? Hey, is, is it dark? <sighs> Papa, I got him, I got him. Rosie, get your hands off of my neck. <laughs> No fuse, bud. I'm from the electric company. <laughs> I just turned off Mr. Basker's light. Then, uh, then uh, why is it dark in a Pasquale's a story here? Yeah. <laughs> I know there's something with Cocker. I don't know, Mr. Basker's story. Could be somebody's done a neat little job of switching wires. Now, who would do a thing like that? <laughs> Furthermore, it's illegal. Pasquale. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just a little joke, Luigi? <laughs> I'm going to pay the $27 a bill. <laughs> Here, Mr. Electrician. Okay. Well, then you don't need me. Hey, Luigi, don't go away now. Wait for my son. Go buy a papa. <laughs> <laughs> It's dark here. Keep quiet. Say, you sound cute, honey. (laughs) 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 I'm not doing anything tonight. Huh? Good. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll go down and turn on the light. No, no. Oh. Rosa, when electrician Amanda comes back, be extra nice at the hair. Eh? Hey, the light's on. Here it comes, Rosa. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Electrician Man. Oh! <laughs> What's the matter? Where you going, my son? Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, big lesson I'm going to learn today is American companies, they never try to take away from you what they don't belong to them because they're not really owned by rich millionaires. they owned by veterans, widows, retired people, and the Boy Scouts. <laughs> I guess that these must be poor millionaires. Another wonderful thing I'm going to find out about America common people they have shares in a company is called the common stock <laughs> someday your son of luigi is going to own so much stock is going to be no place in a house so i keep him in a yard <laughs> that's going to be called the luigi basco's stock yard <laughs> of course i'm going to spray with a sweet air so it's going to smell better <laughs> anyway mamma mia I'm a follow the American dream, which is to go from a rags to riches. So far, I'm a take the first step to being a millionaire. Only one year in America, and already I'm a pauper. <laughs> Your loving son, Luigi Pasco, the little immigrant. I should really choose to try Howard to rush is written by Mac Benoff and Blue Diamond and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carroll Master starred as Luigi Basco without a need to swallow. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>